No, I'm pretty sure that's Yashuo. Boom! Hey, what's up, guys? Chris Cole here, and finally, we have a brand new League of Legends cinematic to react to because it's actually been a while now of course you guys let me know in the comments that the new cinematic came out and as always in part one we just go in and react to the cinematic and in part two we dive right back in to talk about some cool filmmaking things that took place now speaking about filmmaking it has been my job for the last decade and through hundreds of projects from short films to campaign advertisements to insane concepts i develop my own program to teach you how to do the same in no time. From my filmmaking techniques to secret tricks and hacks I've developed throughout the way, as well as everything between, you know, gear, sound design, coloring, VFX design, everything that you need to know in one place from one person that exercises it all to bring a super cool idea to the screen for people to experience. Whether you want to start out as a hobby, which is just what I did, and you want to recreate super cool scenes from films like lightsaber fight or some form of sci-fi or horror or action scene, this is the place for you. And then if you decide, you can take it to the pro level and make it your work. If that sounds cool, make sure to check out the Gorilla Filmmaker platform from the link in the description, where I've also put a 15% off discount code if you decide to join me and my crew as a Gorilla Filmmaker. And with that said, let's fire up YouTube and check out the League of Legends still here cinematic youtube full screen and one two three tomorrow is a hope never a promise always great to start with a bird's eye view Valkyries. They look a bit like them. <laughs> Come on, let's go. Oh, is the one with the purple magic force. Nice. Ooh, 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 ooh. That's sick. Nice, come on. Nice. Who is in this world? Nice. Ooh. That's how you do slow motion. Oh, me! Yashio got old, man. Or is it his bro? No, I'm pretty sure that's Yashio. Oh. oh. <laughs> yes, boy. Oh, that was sick. Like he's not even touching them. Made the imagery done it. Oh, 
<laughs> Mate, this song is amazing as well. What? Sick. I came from the back, actually. Nice. Let's go together. Jesus freaking sick that's what i'm talking about man it, it, these things don't come often in the guild of legends cinematics but when they do they hit really hard it just gets you so excited because the visuals and the sound and the soundtrack is just amazing mate that was perfect let's give this a like mate it's already at what it's been like a day and a half or something number two on trading 40 million views jesus christ like this video as well guys it always helps and now let's jump right back and talk about one or two scenes that they were just brilliant personally i think my favorite was the one with yashua when he's kind of old and he splits the arrow i'm a sucker for like splitting arrows with swords you know we had the same one in overwatch with genshi oh that was such a sick scene um so yeah let's jump right back talk about a few cool scenes thematically filmmaking wise what we would do if we were to kind of like try to replicate this with live uh live action uh but yeah that was that was so cool so tomorrow is a hope not a promise never a promise, never a promise yet so we uh first start with some now sound design the soundtrack hasn't kicked in yet and we open up with a bird's eye you this is referring to when you have a drone shot and it looks dead straight down to the ground um and this is a great shot to give you kind of like um a chest map of the location of what's going on and we can see the character relatively in the center surrounded by a few uh killed bodies that he took out but also some other people just approaching slowly and instantly you know it gives us so much information um and when you start with a shot like that, whether that is a, a drone shot or a wide shot, when there is just, you know, it gives you a lot of information. Basically, it drops you in the location instantly to let you know where it takes place, who's there, what's happening, and then it's going to cut to a close-up to give you more detail. Sometimes you can do the exact reverse one, and that one creates a bit more intrigue, so you can start with close-ups, like a foot stepping on a puddle of water, reflections rippling through, a close-up of the gun or the breath being uh, very agonizing. This creates more intrigue because we haven't seen a shot like this that gives us all of that info. So then we will drop in closer at some point, like this. A lot of slow motion happening and now the soundtrack starts bleeding in. Very cool. Also, this is kind of like cool to talk about briefly, which is the depth of field. Now, I got the iPhone 15 Pro because the video camera quality is insane. And I want to make a few examples of how you can actually start filmmaking by just using this phone, which is insane, man. Um, but this thing, the one thing that they can never do, at least currently, is the natural beauty of depth of field, which happens when you have a massive sensor, like the one I'm filming with right now, and a really high quality lens with a very wide open aperture. Now, this is another tool that you can use, which they use in this case, which is basically blurring the background, so you can tell what's happening. Not only you can use depth of field to create separation and keep the eyes focused on the parts of the image that are focused while blurring the rest, but you can also use it as a tool to hide a few things or like, you know, 
show something without really showing it. Which here, we can see a figure, but don't know what it is. The, the other cool thing is we, they use a lot of different environments in the cinematics with the songs, which is really cool because it just gives you, in such a short period of time, so much. This is really cool. The only thing I would say is the visuals are so stunning uh, and the soundtrack is amazing as well. But the thing that's missing, it's sound design. In a few key moments, you don't have to sound design everything, but in a few key moments, you know, when the wings go or the short classes or that slow motion scene, something happens. It would be really cool if they would merge sound design alongside the song a bit lower than the song, so the song is still the main audible power source. But there's so many great things, but I cannot feel, but feel slightly disconnected from the action because that sound design is missing. So, for example, see, oh, actually, they actually did it there. When she drops, there was a sound design of her hitting the ground. That's really cool. When you implement sound design elements like that, you really bring something to life. And I love the... This... Perfect, man. It doesn't get more epic than this. <laughs> love the... Perfect. They also use very smart transitions between the elements. For example, she used the fire epic, you know, limit break move here. Uh, and those fires transition to the next uh, battleground, which is a village on fire. And this is really cool because that way you have such a nice kinetic synergy between linking the different um, battlefields. Really cool. And now, my favorite scene personally, you have the classic bad guys. You shall not pass. It's insane. Another cool thing is to talk uh, is how they set up the different um, the, diff the the visual cut of the edit, basically, and that usually what you do. The easiest way to explain this is that you have the basic coverage, right? This is a wide shot, giving you the space and the characters in relation to one another. And that is a great way to just, you know, establish to your audience, listen, he's there, they're there, and this is what's happening around them. And after you do that, with the basic coverage, you cut from their perspective and from the other character's perspective. And then here and there, you sprinkle in some awesome close-ups of things happening, like the eyes, or the sword, or anything depending on the scene. But that is it. Every single scene we see as an audience or from a filmmaker's perspective that's how it's constructed basic coverage get a wide show the action getting close getting close from the other guy's perspective and then sprinkling a few close-ups boom you have so many things to cut with and make a six scene see that's the close-up i'm referring to perspective boom Great use of slow motion, man. We reveal the character. Come on, sword time. Best scene ever. Hold the song beat. That's how you do it, boy. Great job, guys. Six solos, oh, man. I can't pause it. It's a sick level. Sick. And now we're back at the beginning, which was at the forest. You know, the time has quite passed by. And we have another cool fight scene. And then the character will come in uh, to save the day. I really like 
just every location of like in battlefield they used has its own character which is sick um you know from this one kind of like dark foggy forest eerie situation with very desaturated colors but looking so great to the other battlefield going to the sky back to the floor with that lovely sunset situation to the dark night of the village with the fire illuminating everything just perfect man the visual intrigue was on point the soundtrack was sick the sound design was really good i hope they would put a bit more in just to really bring everything to life together but no you guys let me know what you thought about this in the comment section down below as i can see from the views this is just like skyrocketing which is epic to see uh, but yeah, let me know, and if you have another recommendation, let me know down in the comment section as well. Check out the Guerrilla Filmmaker platform if you're interested in this and you want to start becoming a filmmaker yourself. This is by far the best way to tackle that, like I said, whether as a hobby or you want to grow pro eventually. Uh, and yeah, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Till then, stay awesome and creative.